Sometimes all you need is a simple PC to perform your daily tasks without the need for a ton of graphical power. And in those cases an APU build is ideal. An APU build relies on only the CPU to do both graphics and the processing part without using a dedicated graphics card. This case is designed with the intention of being a minimalistic and unique looking low noise alternative for those wanting a simple system that can both work as an on-desk setup that with the right hardware can even play some light games, but also something that can blend nicely into your interior as a visible media PC next to your TV or even as a standalone unit acting as a home server for various purposes. With room for up to 4 2.5 inch SSDs or for one 3.5 inch drive combined with a 2.5 inch SSD, I'm sure this design can also act as a small scale NAS solution for some people. The overall case size is 202 by 202 by 317 millimeters and the print volume required to print this is 202 by 202 by 215 millimeters. Speaking of printing, this case is designed in collaboration with Elegoo and their brand new 3D printer, the Centauri Carbon. The Centauri Carbon is Elegoo's first Core XY printer and I must say that after using this printer for a while now, it's been delivering consistently good prints for me over the past month and the first layers stick pretty much perfectly every single time. It comes stock with this double-sided build plate that's textured on one side and smooth on the other side. Which build plate to use can easily be selected both on the display before starting a print, but also wirelessly from the new Elegoo Slicer which seems to be a modified version of Orca Slicer. The Centauri Carbon can even shoot time lapses and even though they aren't the greatest I've seen I'm still glad they decided to include this feature given the insanely low starting price of only 299 US dollars, which I believe might just be the best price to performance ratio printer you can buy at this time. As the name implies, it's even fully capable of printing carbon fiber infused filaments like for example this Carbon Fill CF03 from Foreign Futura which I actually used to print the dark external parts of this case. I can honestly say after using this printer for a while and given the price tag I can highly recommend this printer for anyone wanting to get into the world of Core XY printers thanks to its high speed, consistency and large print volume, perfect for projects like this one. Check out the link below to learn more about the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Here we can see an overview of roughly how much filament is required for each part in this build. The total here comes out to roughly 1.2 kilograms, but this is just an estimate and will vary based on your personal settings. Now let's get started preparing the parts for the case. The main structure of the case consists of these 7 parts which are all easily printable without any support material. And to get started we can grab these two parts and put those to the side so we're left with this little stack of parts. We can then open our drawer and grab some M3 threaded inserts, as well as some M3 by 10 mm screws. We then want to grab our motherboard mounting plate and here we want to install 4 threaded inserts into the standoffs followed by 2 inserts into the top, 2 more inserts into the rear, 2 more into the bottom and finally 4 more into the backside opposite of the standoffs. Next we can add another 4 inserts into the bottom of our middle air intake. There is supposed to be another hole down here which should be visible in the STL that you can download. After melting in place the 4 inserts we want to add 2 more into the rear of the intake. If using the mount for 4 2.5 inch drives we want to add another insert here as well. I forgot to press record on the next part but basically we want to add another 4 inserts into the top fan mount and one more into the upper corner of the rear IO panel. And finally we're now ready for the assembly. The first part to grab is the base and our middle air intake. After aligning the two parts they can be secured in place using 4 M3 screws from the inside of the base. Next we can take a look at this slot right here. This is where we want to add our motherboard mounting plate and it simply slides into the slot and secures in place with two screws from the bottom. Our IO shield bracket can now be installed and by mounting it to the motherboard plate and the air intake it also helps to stiffen up the whole assembly. We're now ready for our motherboard and the CPU cooler and all components are here pre-installed. Here we have a Ryzen 7 5700G cooled by a Noctua NHL12S with 16GB of RAM and the motherboard can be secured to the mounting plate using some M3 screws into our standoffs. We can now install our 12mm power button and this installs into this little hole in the back of the case under the IO shield. We can now move on to installing our SFX power supply 
And here it's important that the intake fan is facing up towards the motherboard, as the lower portion of the case will be completely blocked off, preventing airflow from below. After securing the power supply in place, we can now add all of our power cables like 24-pin motherboard, 8-pin CPU, as well as our SATA power cables if we're using extra storage. There should also be enough room to tuck away any excess cables inside of the base of the case. We can now turn our case around and we can see that we do have access to our CPU cooler backplate as well as any rear-mounted M.2 drives from the backside. Let's now install our hard drive bracket. This bracket secures in place using four M3 screws, one in each corner. Each SSD needs to be mounted to one of these brackets that allow it to slide into the slot in the mount. The outermost SSD is offset a little bit from the inner SSD to make cable management easier, especially when using angled cables. The SSDs can then be locked in place by using this little plastic piece that with the help of one M3 screw or thumb screw clamps in place all four drives. Once all the cables are hooked up, it's possible to use a zip tie or two directly onto the motherboard mount to keep things nice and tidy. Our system should at this point be functional, but we're still missing a few parts. This top fan mount can hold one normal 120mm fan. We want to have the intake side of the fan facing down into the hole to ensure that air is sucked out through the top rather than pushed down into the case. The fan cable can then be fed through the hole in the fan mount and plugged directly into the fan header, before the whole fan mount secures in place using a total of three M3 screws, two down into the motherboard mount and one into the rear I.O. panel, locking it all together. To further stabilize the structure, we can now add the stabilizer bar in front of the CPU cooler. This simply pushes into the slots in the top and middle part and will be kept in place by the external cover. Our internals are now pretty much done, but as I mentioned in the beginning, there's also a second option to use one 3.5-inch hard drive combined with one 2.5-inch SSD. This mount uses the same four holes as the other SSD mount, but clamps onto the sides of the hard drive. The extra SSD can then be secured directly onto the screw holes on the hard drive itself, making for a compact and easy mounting solution fitting perfectly to the round shape of the case. We're now ready to add the external cover. But before we do that, I just want to mention that this external cover requires special printing settings to get the ventilation mesh in the top. So make sure to read the instruction properly on printables before you start printing. The cover simply slides onto the inner body and needs to be aligned with two slots in the top above the I.O. as well as two slots in the bottom to keep it secured in place. All that's left to do now is to add a total of four M3 screws through the holes in the top to secure the external cover in place, and just like that, the project is now complete. When I first thought of this project, I never imagined that the end result would end up looking this good. But after countless hours of designing and testing prototypes, the final result came out so good. And I absolutely love the copper-colored intake vent combined with the carbon fiber infused filament from Forum Futura, which I'll be sure to link to down below for those interested. The case offers a minimalistic appearance that doesn't scream that it's a PC case, that offers both an easy building experience, efficient layout and good airflow. All that combined with a compact, quiet and efficient air cooler like the Noctua NH-L12S and we now have a powerful system that operates surprisingly quiet with comfortable temperatures. Speaking of temperatures, when running a Cinebench stress test on the Ryzen 7 5700G, the maximum temperature reached was just under 74 degrees under full load. During this stress test, the noise levels with my configuration were still within comfortable ranges, making this case ideal for those looking for a relatively quiet build to have on your desk for everyday tasks, next to your TV as a media PC or as a standalone storage server for home use, the choice is yours. If you're interested in building this project for yourself, the files are available to get through the printables link down below. There you can also find parts lists, printing instructions and step-by-step -step building instructions to help you through the process. I also want to give a huge thanks to Elegoo for sending me their brand new Centauri Carbon to test out for this project. And this printer has definitely delivered beyond my expectations. For only $299, this printer gives you so much value for the price you pay, so you should definitely go check out their offers through the link down below. As always, don't hesitate to ask questions, come with project suggestions, or jump in to have a nice chat down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this project, I'd highly recommend a thumbs up and feel free to follow the channel so you don't miss out on my upcoming projects like this one and much more. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll return to see my next project.